you. That's my best joke tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, so my name is Mel, Mel Kelly. I come out, come from Ireland, and I hear a lot of times of Kelly, Kelly, Familia, Kelly, Familia. <laughs> that is not funny. In Ireland, we're all called Kellys. When I was younger in a telephone book, who knows what a telephone book is? <laughs> on the first 123 pages was just Kelly's. And all other names were on the last page. We have nothing in common with the Kelly family. <laughs> yes, it's true. We don't have money, they have money. We are not famous, they are famous. We can't sing, they can't sing either. <laughs> but in Germany I noticed there's a lot of cliches about Irish people, I much say, and it's, it's, it's very hard. For example, that we're always drunk, that our best friend is a sheep, <laughs> and that we all have got red hair. This is really, really unfair. I've got grey hair. <laughs> How did you know that? How did you know that? My goodness, you're Irish, are you? <laughs> You've been in Ireland too many times. But yes, I wanted. To, I didn't want to leave Ireland. Ireland was a great country for me, but I didn't want to leave. But I lost my job, and I didn't want to end up on the street or in a table dancing bar. Well, actually, nobody wanted me in a table dancing bar, but. So I came to Germany, and the thing is, with Ireland compared to Germany, Ireland is actually a very Catholic country. Really, really it is. So it's so Catholic, Jesus wants to be born there. But we couldn't find, oh, three wise men? Or a virgin? But no, it's like, in Ireland, Ireland is like the Saudi Arabia of Christianity. Really, really it is, in comparison, in comparison. For example, in Saudi Arabia they've got loads of sun and sand, and we've got loads of Guinness. In Saudi Arabia they've got loads of oil and money, but we've got even more money because we've got Google and Apple and they don't pay their taxes. <laughs> but seriously, like in the Asians, in the 80s, you couldn't get it. Oh, this talk about condoms earlier on. This is all new for me. In, really, in the 80s in Ireland, you could not get a condom without a prescription from the doctor. True story. You couldn't, in the 90s, you couldn't get a divorce in Ireland until the 90s. And sometime in the distant future, we'll be eventually allowed to have sex. And it's fascinating for me in Ireland that we actually took the, the church that these men in the church had so much power and gave us so much instruction on sex from men without sexual experience with adults. <laughs> but in Ireland it was different because in, in Ireland it was when I was growing up it was 95% Catholic, it was 3% Protestant and 2% all other superstitions. And so, so if I to meet a Jewish person when I was growing up, I would have said to him, so are you a Catholic Jewish or are you a Muslim Jewish? Neil. Uh, well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so I came to Germany and I, I mean, who, who here is a German native speaker? Give us a cheer. Right. That's not bad, but it's crap. The thing is, this is like a few years ago, you ask Americans when Obama was president, are you American? And they were all like, Obama's so good, yeah, we're American, we're American. And now you ask an American under Trump, are you American? And they'll go, sorry, 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 sorry. So who here is a German native speaker? You just don't have the fun that I have in learning German. <laughs> the fun I have. For example, last week I wanted to say to the taxi driver, you've got lovely brown eyes. I said to her, do you have Sir Shona Browner Eyer? <laughs> but I thought, you know, let's learn some proper German. Some of the hard words were for me was like these fair, fair. Like you have like schreiben and Fair schreiben, so you write and you write wrong. Fair schreiben. And then you have laufen and fair laufen. But then you have words like sterben and fair sterben. Uh, does that mean you die on the wrong day? You die in the wrong way? 
And don't believe anyone that tells you, but Germany is a great land for romance. And you've got great words for love and romance. Like lieben, lieben. And then suddenly you're in a relationship and you say, Ich bin verliebt. <laughs> and then you have a lovely word for marriage. How long are you guys married? 20 years? And straight away after the marriage, Heiraten, heiraten, and nach der wedding you say, Ich bin fair heiratet. Oh. But I wanted to learn how to be cool. Can you be cool in German? No. <laughs> was that the German saying that? Or was that? <laughs> so I was trying to learn to be cool. So I wanted to learn a couple of Schimpfwort in German. A couple of Schimpfwort, a couple of curse words, you know. So try to be cool with the cool kids. So I thought, you know, so the ones I learned was, Vollpfosten. Du bist ein Vollpfosten. <laughs> Nicht ein Halbpfosten, ein Vollpfosten. <laughs> Oder, du bist ein Sänger. Nein, ein Flachsänger. Du bist ein Flachsänger. But my favorite is Arschgeiger. <laughs> Du bist ein Arschgeiger. No, du bist nicht ein Arsch, du bist nicht ein Geiger. Du spielst dein Geiger mit dein Arsch. <laughs> Am I in the cool kids gang? Yeah, the Germans are in the cool kids gang. Yeah, yeah. But there's other things, there's other great things about learning German which are great, I must say, for me. For example, like the numbers. Like when you have the numbers, it's a crazy system you have in Germany. Like, so you do one, two, three, this is great. So, eins, zwei, drei. It's great, perfect. But then you get the words, numbers like 21. 21. Auf Deutsch. Ein, zwanzig. Zwei und zwanzig. Drei und zwanzig. Yeah? And then it goes to 121. Ein hundred, ein und zwanzig. Ein hundred, zwei und zwanzig. And then 1,121. Ein thousand, ein hundred, ein und zwanzig. Ein hundred, ein thousand, zwei und zwanzig thousand. And ihr sagt, dass wir immer betrunken sind. Wer hat diese Nummersystem erfunden? Ich war so... Nein, Stephanie, danke, Stephanie. Ich war so stolz auf Riverdance, aber was ihr Deutsche haben, ihr habt die Nummertanz. Die Nummertanz. <laughs> but uh, there's another game, Scrabble. Who knows the game Scrabble? In English, playing this in English is so much easier. You can play this and win this with three letter words, four letter words, five letter words. Our longest word in English is 25 letters, anti disestablishmentarian. <laughs> but in German, huh? <laughs> Words. Einheit Erklärungen, 32 letters. Rex Schuch für Sitzung und Gesellschaften, 38 letters. But the best one, 80 letters. Donau, Damm, Schief, Fahrt, Elektrizität, Hauptrieb, Bewerk, Bau, Unter, Beamt, Gesellschaften. 80 letters. Scrabble with small boards for our small words. We live on a small island and we need space for our tea and our beer and all that stuff. But in Germany you've got big boards and big words and everything here is big. It's like Oktoberfest. <coughs> Oktoberfest, you've got the big Oktoberfest tents. And Oktoberfest, you've got the big Oktoberfest beers. Rawr, big macho German beers. The big Oktoberfest chickens. The big Oktoberfest breasts. The big October, everything is Big in Germany is just like rah. It's <laughs> <laughs> all big. It's all big. But oh, who's interested in breast down there? <laughs> so yes, yeah, it's a Scrabble. Scrabble's a big game here. So yes, who here? What age of people here? Who here is under thirty years of age? Give us a clap. Stephanie, <laughs> you were not under thirty. People who are under 30, they've got so much energy and life and hope. <laughs> you make me sick. <laughs> anyone here between 30 and 40? <laughs> and anyone here over 40? Yeah. Well done, guys, we are still pretty. <laughs> On my last birthday, I was 45 years of age. Oh. I turned to my girlfriend and I said, Am I getting older? Do you know what she said? Yes, you are. <laughs> Girls are just so honest. But there is one part of this is, she's actually two years older than me. Which means that she is a cougar. <laughs> and 
the other way around, which means that I am a toy boy.